I think the, the, the first session was about the coordination between grid and generation investment and, um, and the question where what, what coordination leads to and it seemed that one probable outcome would be some kind of more procurement, more, more official uh, decision making, more centralized decision making and less market based decision making which also means that the risks will be shifted from, from individual or might be shifted from individual uh, investors towards uh, the public, the social, uh, the end consumer. Um, and the question was, who is going to decide that? So who is going to do the decision-making process and who is going, going to be the wise and omniscient uh, decision-maker? Um, what we already discussed also now was the question, uh, there's of course a possibility to have processes implemented for coordination, but there's also another way forward, which is uh, trying to use price signals, at least for the coordination between generation and network, and the situation in the network, which is going towards zonal prices, and as we discussed uh, just a, few, a couple of minutes ago, uh, nodal pricing. And at least one of my, my conclusions uh, in that respect is that if we take all those issues where we say, okay, uh, evidently the old, kind of the old market design was appropriate for a more long-term, foreseeable, predictable uh, uh, market environment, and we are approaching a less predictable market environment under the assumption that 2050 realizes, uh, because of course the scenarios in the Commission's paper are, uh, I would say, uh, ambitious, take, at least taking into account uh, the experience we have made during the last couple of years concerning ambition and reality. So I would say for a, lot, a huge part of Europe there might be a, a, a difference between uh, uh, 2050 scenarios uh, from the Commission and what we will see in, in 2050, unfortunately, but it might be the case. So certainly I think one, one major question will be if what we see maybe even uh, realizing in Germany having, I don't know, 100 percent or even more than that uh, installed capacity from intermittent generation for, for covering the, the national load, whether this is the reality in Europe, that's, I think that's a different question. And if this is not the case, then the question is if a more regional approach, a more regional picture of, of the issue will not kind of alleviate a lot of the, of the problems because there will be kind of this intermittent generation is part of a bigger picture and therefore all the associated problems might be less problematic. <clears throat> Uh, I think in the second session we uh, were talking about two potential reasons for interference in generation. One was the more, as I saw it at least, uh, the more theoretical problem of having more intermittency, uh, <clears throat> lower uh, load curves, and therefore the problem whether new investment will be will be done in this uh, uh, environment. And the second problem was because of the situation we have nowadays in, in, in southern Germany uh, or, or in the future in other parts, whether these are asking for kind of local regional answers, hands-on questions, so to say, and less theoretically in, the, in that area, I think. <clears throat> I think what we found is that Certainly there are theoretical arguments in favor of capacity elements in a specific environment of, of a scenario of a market. What we discussed was whether this scenario of a market is a realistic one, whether markets typically don't they look different in reality. So we ha don't have perfect competition, we have, I know, incumbents with market power, we have a lot of additional circumstances which induce additional investment just to keep up my market share and so on and so forth. So 
as we discussed, um, there are some reasons for those capacity elements, but uh, it's questionable where, whether we are there. And the second uh, question is whether we are seeing those problems in reality yet. So I think I more or less, at least my, my understanding was that, uh, more or less common view was that so far we have not identified the immediate necessity for Europe to implement those capacity elements. Um, could be in the future, let's see. Um, and the question is, uh, what do we have to prepare for those occasions, maybe? Uh, we have also seen a huge diversity of mechanisms, um, and uh, all those mechanisms were invented for a specific purpose to solve a specific problem, and therefore, uh, I think it, we have well seen that we should not have a, have a very general discussion about that topic, but a more specific and go into specific problems. Well, I, I called the, the southern German problem a load pocket. Maybe this was not the right uh, 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 naming, as I was told. But um, uh, I think it's clear that it's it's a local or regional problem which was caused by a political decision principle um, and therefore there has to be some, some solution to that and evidently one, one possibility is one which was already used in the past which is cross-border, looking for alternative supply cross-border, why, why not? So that's certainly a, a possibility there. Um, However, I, th I think what we have seen is that, um, as said before, the market design issue, I think, is much more the question of underinvestment in, in, in the market which we have today, which is bilateral, long-term contracts uh, in wholesale markets, and the question whether we have an adequate level of uh, reserve margins there. In the third session we, we just had, and I prepared that before the session, so I, ca I cannot, could not integrate the discussion there. <clears throat> I think it mainly was about the coordination via price signals and coordination between network and generation via price signals, and that's a very long discussion. I think we, uh, on regulators' part, we, we started that discussion I think the, the first step was discussing G components in the network. Uh, it was something like 2002, 2003, I think they were the, the first papers. Uh, the major concern then was that, first of all, those G components will not be sufficient really to deliver or a, a sufficient investment signal for new investments. It might change dispatch of existing capacity, but it will not really dramatically change, in, at least as long as we take into account G components, which are realistic, so to say. It's not 200% of the network tariff or something like that, but it's a small part of the network tariff, then it will not change the investment decisions dramatically. Uh, maybe within one technology between gas and gas and gas, so uh, different locations for different uh, gas power stations, but even there, it's questionable, it has to be a, a stable signal, and again, that would be counterintuitive if, if the situation changes, then the G component should be changing. So, again, that, that was uh, the start of the discussion, I think. The question of zonal prices, in my view at least, as I said already today, one of the ideas, I think, of the whole zonal prices was it, 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 it might be cross-border, and therefore helping a lot of reducing political counter-arguments against increasing capacity in the network and these things. So it's a, it has a very political dimension in my view. Um, for, uh, but, and again, it was a step towards integrating information from the network and the generation business, so to say, into one, one area giving uh, signals to the, to the industry. Whether it's already now a possibility to go forward uh, towards a, a nodal pricing system, I'm, still I'm, I'm a bit skeptical about uh, 
uh, this possibility, even if we find uh, kind of scientifically that it would be the, the optimal uh, solution. I, I, I think it would kind of overstress and overstretch uh, um, the realistic implementation on a European scale uh, at that moment. Um, I think we have been discussing the question which markets should be covered and it was quite interesting I think and this is certainly something which, which uh, has to be analyzed further I would say how we can integrate much more the more real-time markets into our business models. We have been talking about cross-border reserve uh, energy markets. We have been talking about close to real-time trading because most of the information which is relevant for trading comes in maybe some hours before real-time only. So uh, this kind of last-minute optimization within the system is a very important one and I, I think that there's no evidently not sufficient uh, research in that area and there would see some, some, some further maybe some, some good papers for our programs uh, at e-control which can be uh, proposed. Um, The question is whether our market design, therefore, and that's already related to what we discussed, whether the market design is, is done for kind of standard spot and forward contracts, bilateral contracts, and what we have a bit uh, forgotten is, is intermittent generation. The question then is, can we integrate those pieces of generation into a market if we do not uh, propose uh, some adequate market for that because if they are only marketable very close to real time and we have no markets for those uh, time spans then of course we would prevent having them integrated into a tradable and transferred into a tradable product if that's really the ultimate goal that we want to have intermittent generation somehow marketed sold to normal participants without feeding tariffs and guaranteed lifetime remunerations, the only way is to, to uh, produce, to offer markets where these products can, can be sold and bought. And uh, what Carsten was kind of implying, I think, was that it would be necessary to have to integrate those markets into our kind of European standard market design um, and certainly that's something I think where, where also some, some, some additional research is warranted. Um, I think uh, one, one question which was raised in this last session, uh, before I'm finalizing now, uh, is, is the question of competition concerns and liquidity, where I'm, I'm still a bit unclear, uh, which was raised several times and I think the, the basic reason for that seems to be that um, in a lot of markets we are struggling with finding liquidity and organizing liquidity and now we are proposing kind of narrowing down the regional scope at least for, for trading areas and therefore we might have pivotal suppliers in a lot of those regional markets and they could abuse the market power. Also, um, not, I did not yet fully understand the, the absolute advantage of having all those. Yes, I have a lot of information yeah, with those uh, uh, bids in, in a nodal pricing, but I'm not yet sure whether this would really enable a competition authority or, uh, or the regulator under, under remit uh, uh, checking all those trades for market abuse whether this would enable us really to identify uh, abusive behavior or distortive behavior by the market participants. Uh, I think um, whenever there's a, a better possibility to manipulate prices, I'm, I'm a bit scared about that, even if I have more information. So I, I would prefer a solution where there's less incentive or mess, less possibility to manipulate, and then I'm, 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 I'm sleeping more happily, so to say. So I, I think this 
in my view, this was a very valuable uh, workshop because, um, at least from my point of view, I, I learned a lot about uh, actual discussions concerning intermittent generation, how to handle those issues and how to bring them into the market. Uh, and I'm sure that we still have a lot of open scientific questions to, to answer. Um, as you proposed, it might also be a good idea to cooperate more closely with, with science on some of those uh, topics, and I think we will come up with some ideas about that. Uh, thank you very much. Do you want to? I think that this will not be the last occasion to have this discussion, and uh, I think one of the things I learned from this is maybe we need to have a closer correlation or sort of combination of the thinking that's happening or that's put into the capacity and congestion management guidelines. But I think it is a, t a very important issue that we are clear that whatever changes we make to the market design, and I think we do have to make some changes, uh, but I also am convinced we should take great care if we change them because we might have not just intended but also unintended consequences. So in this sense, I wish everybody a nice remaining stay in Vienna or a good trip back. I hope we uh, sort of encouraged you also to start thinking about that. We thank you very much for your participation. And I think this might not be the last uh, occasion where we have this discussion. Thank you very much.